Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time it's going to be another Goki Nightmare combo tutorial, very similar to the combo I posted yesterday, which was Goki plus any monster on field, ending in a Griffin, Trigate Wizard, Searched Imperial Order, and a Cerberus protecting your board and all that sort of stuff, uh, and drawing four cards. This combo is going to be the exact same ending board, with Griffin, a live Trigate Wizard, Cerberus on field, and Search Imperial Order, and you drew four cards. But this time it is going to be a 1, 1.5 card combo in the form of Predator Plant Orphus Scorpio is going to be the only card that is being used to make this play happen. Literally, Resolving Scorpio will make this entire play live. Uh, the only thing that is required, as you might be able to tell by the fact that there's three cards in my hand at this point, is that you do require at least having a monster in your hand to discard for Scorpio, and then having at least another other monster in your hand just to stay in your hand for the combo sequence to occur. This is required because there's a specific point where we need to search a Goki card and then special it off Firewall, so we need to have a monster in our hand in order to be able to trigger Firewall to special a card from hand and then structure our chain links around it. So that is why this Draw and Lock Bird is here, but unlike the previous combo where that monster eventually got incorporated into the ending field, this card, this Draw and Lock, is not going to be used into the board at all. It is literally just in our hand so that we can trigger Firewall Dragon's effect during our combo sequence optimally, but it is going to stay in our hand for the uh, for the ending point of the combo. So that's just something that I felt like you needed to know. Now you only need to have the monster in your hand at the point after you draw a card off Mermaid. That's when it matters. Um, so that's like you don't even need to open the monster as long as you are able to thin your deck and then draw into the monster off the Mermaid, which is very possible. Goki decks are usually 75 to 80 percent monster cards, uh, but I digress. Basically, I'm not going to waste too much more time because this is very similar to the previous combo, although it does change a bit in some very key areas. So I'm just going to start this and let you see how it goes. So you're going to summon Scorpio, discard whatever monster for the Predaplant Darling Cobra, search the Instant Fusion, and then we're going to go into MX Saber Invoker, the enabler of several degenerate strategies over the years. have no idea why Invoker is, um, is a card that's still around. I mean, this is like, what, the 6th or 7th deck that, like, just casually plays Invoker as a play enabler, as like a broken play enabler, and like two of those were FTK decks. I have no idea why that card is still around. But anyway, so you're going to make Suprex, and you're going to make uh, uh, the Invoker into Izzold, and at this point we're going to go Izzold, Chainlink 1, Suprex, Chainlink 2, and just like the previous combo that I showed, we're going to search Headbat off the Suprex, and then because we've already searched and summoned Suprex this turn, and soaked up its summon effect, or summon, soak it up, uh, its, uh, search effect, uh, soak it up, but it's such an effect, uh, um, if I could, uh, not stutter and also not be racist, low key, uh, basically we're gonna add Suprex off the Izzold because we can't summon it for the rest of the turn, but we've already searched, uh, off of the Suprex, so we don't need to summon it. So at this point, we'll mill our Phoenix Blade to Grave off Izzold to summon Octo Stretch from deck. And then this Suprex that we added that can't be summoned will just be perfect discard fodder for the Goki Headbat. And now at this point is a great time to go ahead and get Phoenix Blade back because we can just banish the two Suprexes that we can't summon for this turn anyway. And we can go about business. So now from here, we're going to make the Nightmare Cerberus with the Headbat and the Octo Stretch. Those are both going to trigger. So one and two. You're going to get Goki Rematch off one of them. And then off the other one, you're just going to get any Goki that hasn't used its Search Effect this turn. Twist Cobra is the first in line, so that's the one I'm going to pick. There's no reason behind getting Twist Cobra. Uh, and then from here, you're just going to activate the Goki Rematch. You'll notice that I'm going to be holding Instant Fusion for a long time in this combo sequence. That is because it is more optimal to use it for this combo sequence towards the very, very end. But so from here, we're going to go straight into the Firewall with the two monsters we rematched back and the Izzold over here. And then from here, we're going to go into the Mermaid. Uh, so at this point, it didn't matter that the Drolin Lock was in our hand or not because we have the monster to summon. It only matters at the point where you're going to make Goblin after you make Mermaid uh, in order to be able to trigger the Firewall. So Mermaid Chainlink 1 and Firewall Chainlink 2. So Mermaid will discard Phoenix Blade. Firewall will special summon our Cobra out of hand at Chainlink 2. And then Chainlink 1, the Mermaid, will trigger summoning Ibli. Uh, we'll resolve summoning Ibli and then we'll draw our card. And so now at this point was the point where you need to have the monster in your hand so that we could trigger Firewall Dragon's effect right here when we're about to uh, make this goblin. The combo does not work to make Cerberus unless you have this. If you don't have the monster in your hand, you can still do this full combo, set order, do all that nonsense, and you draw three cards, uh, but you end on Goblin, Trigate Wizard, and Griffin, which is significantly worse than having Cerberus 
with the active protection of destruction by card effects and then also being able to just get the Ibli off your opponent's field and draw a card for free. So you draw three and leave Goblin on field if you don't have a monster at this point. But if you do have a monster at this point, you draw four cards and have Cerberus instead of Goblin. And that's a huge difference. You'd think it wouldn't be, but it actually is. But so from here, we'll add back Phoenix Blade. And uh, at this point, we're going to make the Goblin. And this is where the monster in hand matters, like I said. So you're going to go Goblin with the Ibli. And the Cobra, you're going to use Cobra's effect. You are not going to use Ibley's effect. You are going to trigger Firewall, and you are going to trigger Goblin. So the purpose is to have Firewall here that we can trigger before the Cobra search. So Goblin is going to discard the Phoenix Blade. Firewall will trigger to summon a card from hand. At this point, it would be Draw and Lock, but the Twist Cobra is going to resolve adding any Goki that we can summon and resolve a search for, and that is Rescorpio. So we'll summon this over here. Goblin will let us draw a card. And now from here, we're just going to activate Firewall Dragon's effect, and we are going to add back the Ibli, and we're going to add back the Octo Stretch. It's important that you add those two back. Ibli and Octo Stretch, very mandatory, very important. So now from here, I'm going to use the Phoenix Blade again, banishing the just junk forward at this point. If the card you discarded, if the monster you discarded was not a warrior, you have two warriors at this point. So it should be noted that just because I discarded a warrior for uh, Scorpio, that's not mandatory. If you discard anything, like a duplicate hand trap or something that's not a warrior monster, it's still perfectly fine. Uh, but because we do have the warrior engraved, we can just uh, banish it instead. I like leaving Twist Cobra's engraved just because Twist Cobra on a Goki monster is sort of like a pseudo out to bore load. Um, outside of just making your own bore load itself. It comes up from time to time. Uh, but so you have the Scorpio on the field, and then we have the Ibli that we can normal summon. So we will normal summon the Ibli. Normal summon the Ibli, use its effect to revive Cerberus where it points to it, and then from here we're going to go into the Binary Sorceress and go towards the Curious play. So at this point, at this point everything's all set. Everything's ready for you to for you to have things done for you. So you're going to trigger uh, Scorpio's effect, you're going to trigger Ibli this time, and then you're going to trigger Firewall. Uh, so you're going to make Firewall 1, Scorpio 2, and Ibli 3 just to mask all of it from potential hand traps. Uh, the Ibli will be summoned to the opponent's field, where Scorpio will resolve searching Bear Hug because we haven't resolved its search. It's the last one that hasn't resolved its search for the turn. And then we're going to special the Bear Hug. So now at this point, we've got the three Earths that all have different types. The Warrior, the Cyburst, and the Fiend. So we're going to go for the Curious over here. And then that's going to trigger Bear Hug search, which is then going to trigger Firewall as well. And then we can trigger the Curious. So we'll do Curious 1, Firewall 2, and then Bear Hug 3. And so what we're going to require off the Bear Hug is just any monster that we can summon. Uh, that could be Headbat. It could be the other Octo Stretch. Uh, I'm just going to get the Headbat. So getting Headbat, and then off of the Firewall, you have to summon the Octo Stretch that's in your hand. That's actually important. Uh, it's important because you need to make Link Karibo. But so Curious here is then just going to send Imperial Order to Grave, and then Curious will mill cards. Uh, didn't mill anything too important, so like you still have rematch in your deck and stuff, like extra copies of that if you play multiples like I do. Uh, and then so from here, you're just going to Link the Octo Stretch into Link Karibo because we want to put extra monsters on the field. So we'll trigger this Firewall and that's going to summon this Headbat from our hand. And then you're going to go into the Nightmare Griffin. So you're going to go into Griffin with these two, with the, with the Link Karibo and the Curious right here. And then Firewall could trigger its effect here. And that would summon the Droll and Lock from our hand. But we're not going to. So no. No effect here. We're going to use the Griffin, though. We're going to discard this, and we're going to reset the Imperial Order. Set that here. And then we draw a card. So that's the third card we've drawn. And now at this point, we get to add back Phoenix Blade again. So we'll add that back. We'll just get rid of, uh, like, the two warriors that we searched, I guess. So we'll get Curious and Rescorpio. Even though we milled Marauding Captain. So at that point, that's a card that can be banished for the Phoenix Blade as well. All things that you can keep in mind. But so now from here, where we're at the situation is that this Instant Fusion is still just chilling in our hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to make Trigate Wizard with Firewall and the Goblin. Those go into this. And then we get to activate this Instant Fusion in the Trigate Zone, which lets us summon the Raijin. And then we get to make the Headbat and the Raijin into Nightmare Cerberus, which then gets to use its effect, discarding Phoenix Blade to pop the Ibli. And at that point, we get to draw our fourth and final card. If you want to add Phoenix Blade back at this point just for funsies, you can. You can get rid of Raijin and at this point, like Octo Stretch or Headbat or whatever. Like, look at how many cards we have in Grave that we can do this with. Uh, just get rid of these, add it back just for the free pseudo advantage that it gives. 
But that's that. We still have the draw and lock in hand. We drew one, two, three, four cards, and at this point, this reborn's broken, but that's not part of the combo sequence we're looking at here, so that's that's fine. Uh, you could obviously do some things with that. The impermanence is amazing. The fact that we drew an ash is amazing as well. Uh, but basically, that is Scorpio. Scorpio by itself, plus a monster to discard, did all of this. You have to have a monster in hand in order to trigger Firewall at that specific point that's important, but you get to keep that monster in your hand by holding the instant fusion until later. So it's very it's very worthwhile to note um, that like that's just possible. Uh, like holding instant fusion until the end of the combo sequence is what makes this entire combo sequence possible. Because if you try to use instant fusion earlier in the combo sequence, just so that you don't have to have a monster in your hand, it ends up with weird board presence and weird board states. Uh, so it's just one of those things that's easier to do and save for later, essentially. But yeah, Scorpio plus a monster to discard. So technically, a one, it's a one card combo in terms of what's doing the work. But it is a two card investment. Two card investment gives you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards. We're not counting this because it's still over there, so that's a plus eight. Uh, this was a card that was in our starting hand, so we went from three cards to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Again, three to three to eleven. That's a plus eight in terms of card economy. We have a floodgate in the form of Griffin. We have a floodgate in the form of the Imperial Order. We have the Trigate Wizard that's on the field negating something uh, like. I don't know what more you want. Like, <laughs> this is Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, the reason I pop the Ibli on my opponent's field yet again is that if the matchup is unknown, if it's a game one and I'm doing this, I'm going to pop it with Cerberus and turn it into a free card for me, rather than leave it on the field for my opponent to have a free card that they could potentially go into their own mermaid with, or just summon a monster and then link into a Link 2 with. Uh, because, like, um, in unsighted games, I'm not going to be fearing Kaijus or anything like that. Maybe be fearing e main deck evenly match, but like at that point, Trigate Wizard negates that. Um, a lot of a lot of situational like things like that just come up that are like the reason why if the matchup's unknown, I never leave Ibli on my opponent's field because if they're if they're playing a nightmare deck, they just turn that Ibli into their own mermaid and then they just summon their stuff underneath the mermaid and turn off Griffin. So I don't want to leave my opponent with a possible out to the floodgate that I have on the field in the form of Griffin. So just things like that. Things like that that are factors and things like that to consider, all that sort of stuff. So that is the combo I wanted to show you. Like I said, one card combo in terms of what you require to make the play in terms of card activating, and it yields you this entire result. Like, Predator Plant combos are always ridiculous no matter what deck, but this is particularly ridiculous uh, in terms of what I, think that, uh, what I think that I've seen as far as this goes, but... Anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As per always, links as always are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page, my Twitch page. If you want to go and follow that and get notified next time I go live for my live streams that I try to do weekly, at least once weekly, uh, then definitely go check that out. And if you want to support the channel directly, if you really like the content I've been doing and want to help support the channel and help keep more videos like this being possible on a regular basis, then check out my Patreon link in the description down below. To everyone that is already currently supporting, you have my eternal gratitude and you are a huge reason as to why I'm able to pump out videos on the schedule that I'm now trying to maintain, which is at least once a day, sometimes twice. It depends on how things will be going on that front. But you guys are awesome. Thank you for the support you give and all that sort of stuff. But other than that, as always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. If you're new here, consider subscribing and hitting that bell if you want to get notified when I put videos out, if you want to see more, all that sort of stuff. But other than that, as always, guys, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual. And take care. I'll see you in the next video.